Next on Sisterhood of the Second Act. Penny Blue's book is a testament to her father and lessons he taught her and her nine siblings. She joins us today to talk about A Time to Protest, leadership lessons from my father who survived the segregated South for 99 years. According to a Kaiser Family Foundation study, nine out of 10 adults said they believed that there's a mental health crisis in the U.S. today. Yet many people remain untreated due to lack of insurance or being underinsured. One counseling group is on a mission to reach those who need help. Licensed professional counselor Christy Vaughn is here to tell us more. We'll meet both women on this edition of Sisterhood of the Second Act, right after this. Sisterhood of the Second Act is brought to you by... I'm gonna be an oak tree. I think I'll be a dogwood tree. My kids said they'd be looking for a thorny tree for me. With Evergreen, you can be a tree. Our biodegradable urn combines your ashes, natural soil additives, and a native tree of your choice. Be a tree and grow for tomorrow. I want to be a tree. Learn more at evergreenmemorialtrust.com. Looking for your first home or retirement home? Realtor Monica Nicely can help you find it. Whether you're moving in or out of the Roanoke region, call Monica 540-449-2019, 540-449-2019. Alcova Mortgage Loan Officer Jonathan Sweat helps you seal the deal with the loan to suit your needs with great rates and terms. Call Jonathan 540-314-8843, 540-314-8843. Alcova Mortgage, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS ID number 40508, MLSConsumerAccess.org. Terms and conditions apply. All loans subject to credit approval. Pat Lucas is committed to providing independent financial advice to help women and their families save money during this tax season. Call Pat at 540-798-8104, 540-798-8104. Securities and investment advisory services are offered solely through Equity Services Incorporated, member FENRA SIPC, 4401 Starkey Road, Roanoke, Virginia, 24018. 540-989-4600. Step out the door with confidence, ready to conquer the day. Whether you are going to the cafe down the street or headed into work, you know you will always look your best in cabby styles. Your stylist, Darlene Marshall, will help you pick the styles that make you sparkle. And cabby has styles for all body types. Call Darlene at 540-330-6819, 540-330-6819, and follow her on Instagram at Dapper Darlin. Now from the Fox Radio Roanoke studio, here's Kathy Heberly. Welcome to Sisterhood of the Second Act. I'm Kathy Heberly. Penny Blue was raised on a tobacco farm in Franklin County, Virginia. She returned home after obtaining a mathematics degree from Hampton University, an MBA from Duke University, a certification in project management, and Penny retired from IBM as a delivery project executive. Penny returned home to help care for her dad, who was 95 at the time. He and his stories are the backbone of her book, A Time to Protest, Leadership Lessons from My Father, who survived the segregated South for 99 years. Thank you for coming in today, Penn. Thank you. My pleasure. And I want to start with, you published this book right before the pandemic and prior to George Floyd's murder. What prompted you to write the book in the first place? That timing uh, just happened to be coincidental. It did. Yes. And because, as you know, since I published the book, I had been working on it for quite some time. So what the reason I wrote the book is because, as I said, my dad used to tell us stories all the time. When I say us, all of his children, grandchildren, et cetera. And it dawned on me later in years that all of his stories uh, seemed to be stories of protest. And I felt that they should be documented and published. And so been so before he passed away, my another sister and I made certain we documented the stories and had him retell the stories and we documented everything. And when I looked at it, I said, well, this is really not enough for a book. I said, plus I need to contextualize the stories because the stories would have little meaning without the context that things were happening in. 
Well, your dad didn't march or participate in public protests. So how, explain to us how he protested. As, uh, as I share the book, uh, the feedback is he did daily protests. Uh, one of the things that I have learned from my book is that uh, you have to be taught how to be a slave and you also have to be taught how to be a second class citizen. And my dad always acted as a first class citizen and taught us to be first class citizens. So therefore, anytime that he was not treated as a first class citizen, he protested. Very understandable. And how did you come up with the title of the book? Well, again, once I gathered all the stories and I was trying to think of what the title should be, and I said, well, biblically, there's something, you know, there's a time for everything, even though they don't mention protest in the Bible when they outline the different times. And I said, well, there is a time to protest. And that's how I came up with the title. I love, I love the title. title. And we are talking with Penny Blue, author of A Time to Protest, Leadership Lessons from My Father, who survived the segregated South for 99 years. And how did your dad's stories and the way he lived his life influence you and your siblings? It influenced us from a standpoint of, because there are stories of protest. Well, one of the things my dad used to always say is that children act as their parents act. <clears throat> and so when he was telling us these stories, not only did he share the stories with us, but he and my mother both live what lived the stories that they were telling. So that is what I'm used to is acting as a first class citizen. Okay. And when I'm not treated as a first class citizen, then I make it known because you uh, as uh, an another um, I, I can't I think it was Oprah. It says that you teach people how to treat you. I love that. That is so true mm -hmm. for anybody. Yes. And uh, we hear about famous people and their impact on the world all the time. Why do you think it was important to tell your dad's story? The story of a man not many of our listeners and viewers know. Mainly because we do hear of people such as Martin Luther King or Malcolm X and et cetera. But there are everyday people that help make things happen and move things forward. Right. One of the things that, uh, one of the quotes I talk about in my book is from Frederick Douglass. And it says people that, and this is not the exact quote, but basically people that want freedom without plowing up the ground then they actually are not, actually, can I actually read the um, quote? Absolutely. I'm sorry, it says, those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. And I think that is very critical and that's for the everyday person. A lot of people sit back and they want things to happen and hope for things to happen and think things are going to happen without them putting forth the effort for it to happen. That's, That's exactly right. right. And that goes along with, um, you mentioned telling the story of people in our community to inspire people yes. to make change. So, yes. and do you have a favorite story or lesson from your dad? Yes, I do. My favorite story is, we call it the wheat. Well, let me, I, I won't read the whole thing, but it's called, um, is the wheat story. Okay. And just to, a short version of that is back during his time, of course, farmers gathered together and they would do a round robin and the black and white would do this round robin together. But when they got to each other's house to do the round robin, the white farmers would go in and eat first and then the black farmers would go in and eat. And this was at uh, the white farmers' homes and the black farmers' homes. So my dad talked to the black farmers and said, this is ridiculous for us to allow men to go into our homes first, to eat first, and then we go in second and eat. So they all agreed. And so when they, t my dad told them when they got to his house, they were all going to eat together, which they did. Things went fine. The following year when they did the round robin again, uh, they were getting close to my dad's house, but nobody had said which house they were going to. And the wives needed to know so that they could prepare the food. 
So my dad went to the first white gentleman and said, you know, are we, when are we going to my house next? He says, well, you have to go ask the other man in charge, the man that owned the equipment. So he asked him, he said, well, Charles, you know, last year uh, when we went to your house, you fed us all together. So we weren't going to go to your house this year. So my dad threw down his pitchfork and said, if all I ever lose is a field of wheat, I'll be a rich man. My grandfather threw his pitchfork down and they walked off. Everybody else stayed and continued the round robin. So what that has taught me is even my, my dad had 10 children. He could not afford to lose a field of wheat, right. but he chose to lose that field of wheat versus not being treated as a first class citizen. And so that my grandfather, that's the one lesson. The second lesson is even if everybody agrees behind the closed doors and they decide not to do what you agreed upon, you still have to move forward uh, even if it, you have to do it alone. And so I'm gonna do one more quote here because this was my six year old great nephew that told that said this my two sisters were in in the front seat of a car and he was in the back listening to him talk listening to them talk and he says we stand up for ourselves even if we stand alone and so that was Makai sincere efforts so you teach your children also how to act based on uh, what you do and the stories that you share that's so true and we're talking with penny blue author of a time to protest leadership lessons from my father who survived the segregated South for 99 years. And then um, what type of impact, <clears throat> excuse me, what type of impact do you hope this book has? We're... For people to understand yes. that in order to make things happen, you individually have to work to do that. I, I think, um, I don't want to say misquote, I think it was, but uh, President Obama says, you know, we are the change we're looking for. So you have to work in order to make things happen. You just can't sit back and do that. And I've been doing some book reviews and ha really enjoying it. And not only is it teaching young people or people of color, but it's also inspiring women. And so I, I've really been enjoying that. And where can we buy the book? One on Amazon.com. Okay. And then secondly, I would love to do book reviews with anyone. And so my email address is P as in Penny, E as in Edwards, and the word blue, P-E-B-L-U-E-09 -E at gmail.com. And then that way I come and I share some of the stories and also um, sign the books. That sounds really nice. So thank you so much for coming in today, Penny. It was a pleasure to have you. I really appreciate you having me here today. Thank you so much. We will have Penny's contact information in our show notes at sisterhoodofthesecondact.com. And after the break, a group of counselors is working to make mental health services more affordable to those who need help. Looking for your first home or retirement home? Realtor Monica Nicely can help you find it. Whether you're moving in or out of the Roanoke region, call Monica 540-449-2019, 540-449-2019. Alcova Mortgage Loan Officer Jonathan Sweat helps you seal the deal with the loan to suit your needs with great rates and terms. Call Jonathan 540-314-8843, 540-314-8843. Alcova Mortgage, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS ID number 40508, MLS, ConsumerAccess.org. Terms and conditions apply. All loans subject to credit approval. Pat Lucas is committed to providing independent financial advice to help women and their families save money during this tax season. Call Pat at 540-798-8104, 540-798-8104. Securities and investment advisory services are offered solely through Equity Services Incorporated, member FENRA SIPC, 4401 Starkey Road, Roanoke, Virginia, 24018. 540-989-4600. I'm going to be an oak tree. I think I'll be a dogwood tree. My kids said they'd be looking for a thorny tree for me. With Evergreen, you can be a tree. 
Our biodegradable urn combines your ashes, natural soil additives, and a native tree of your choice. Be a tree and grow for tomorrow. I want to be a tree. Learn more at evergreenmemorialtrust.com. Once again, from the Fox Radio Roanoke studio, here's Kathy Heberly. Welcome back to Sisterhood of the Second Act. I'm Kathy Heberly. According to Mental Health America, 11.5% of youth, that's more than 2.7 million young people, are experiencing major depression. And over half of adults with a mental illness do not receive treatment. Licensed professional counselor, Christy Vaughn of Tinker Creek Creative Counseling is here to tell us how her practice is trying to reach those who don't have insurance or are underinsured. Thank you for being here today. Oh, my pleasure. So your new program is called Mental Health Express Membership. What is it and how does it work? Well, it is basically membership for your mental health. So it allows you to participate in outpatient counseling services for a monthly service fee instead of having to have insurance or meet any crazy deductibles and things like that. So you get um, so many sessions per month with a qualified provider. Well, that sounds wonderful. Um, what prompted you to start the program? Oh my goodness. So our community where we are, all of the colleagues that work with us, we are very community like-minded with regard to mental health and just always trying to put things out there and figure out a way to balance between what the community needs, what we're able to provide, you know, just really think outside the box. So we had a, a bit of a brainstorming session um, and Sydney Richards, one of our providers there actually was the one who said, what if we could just make it like a membership and people could come. And so we kind of had 17 more conversations and figured out what we needed to do and, and put it in place. That's it's such a wonderful idea. Um, I, I think um, there are, as we said, statistically, a lot of people will need it. So who can take advantage of it? And are there any income or age requirements? Um, anyone can actually participate as long as they are, um, you know, suitable for services, as long as outpatient counseling services is something that's would be beneficial for them, then they can absolutely take advantage of it. Um, in some cases, it may not be if they require a little bit higher level of care, okay. you know, things of that nature um, and age appropriateness, you sure. know, things like that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So is there some kind of screening procedure that you do to make sure that they do um, fit into your criteria? When someone comes in and gets linked with us, they will, their first appointment is actually kind of an intake assessment. Okay. And so we go through kind of a background of what's been going on in your life. How are you feeling about things? What is it that you want to work on? You know, that type of thing. And so we kind of are able to, to weed things out from there and, and link people to other services if they need to. That's wonderful. We are talking with licensed professional counselor, Christy Vaughn, about Mental Health Express membership. Um, my next question is how does somebody sign up? Oh, that's easy. They just give us a call. Um, we have uh, our scheduling coordinator, Jamie, will take care of everything. Okay, so we're going to be linking your contact information. That would okay, be great. So yeah. we'll have all of that for, for anybody that needs it. And you might as well tell us a little bit about what are the fees, how are they charged, and so on. Absolutely. <laughs> so the fees range between $150 to $300 per month. Okay. And that covers you to have three sessions a month. You could do individual, you can do family. So like the 300 would be the family range. Okay. Um, so just imagine if your family is going through a crisis. Sure. And everyone in your family, assuming you don't have more than five members, of course, right. you know, everyone in your family can get some services when they need it. I mean, how awesome is that? That's wonderful. And I mean, that's almost every week, really. Right. And and sometimes it is. <laughs> yes, I can understand that. If they need it more, is that a, just, can it be done? Is there maybe an Absolutely. additional of fee? Course. Yes, you guys will yeah. take that into consideration. Sure and, care. Yes, so, so once well. they're in the program, you work with them and... Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And Absolutely. and how does the scheduling work? Is that like um, appointment only? Is there a crisis 
time or how does that work? It is appointment only, oh, yep. Appointment mm -hmm. only. Okay. All of our providers have different scheduling needs okay. for themselves. and That makes sense. That stuff, right. Yeah. So people just need to uh, just call, make their appointment, and um, then you'll help get them in. Absolutely. That sounds really nice. And um, are insurance issues the main reason why people don't get help? Or are there other factors? Tell us a little bit about that, because obviously you started this for a reason. So to be honest with you, you'd probably need about three or four more shows to be able to talk about really? all of the Isn't barriers. That interesting? Well, give us a little overview. So insurance obviously is, is a big factor. You know, some people do not have insurance at all. Okay. Think about people that are that are self-employed. Sure. Um, you know, don't have, uh, their employers are small. They don't have insurance. Um, some insurance carriers do not offer mental health services. Thankfully that we are seeing a lower amount of those, but you know, it's still the case sometimes. Sometimes your deductible is ridiculous. Right. I mean, the deductibles are ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, or the benefits are so minimal that you're paying for each and every session. So we wanted to be able to, if we can get rid of that barrier and kind of meet people in the middle, make things a bit more affordable, more accessible, then we're gonna do that. I, th I think that's really um, so beneficial for, for so many people. And I hear you offer a wide range of modalities. I think that's so important. Tell us about the Tinker Creek Creative Counseling. Oh my goodness. So <clears throat> I'm gonna brag a little bit here sure. because I, I feel like I just hand selected and people just, you know, it just, our colleagues, you know, the, all of the, the individuals that work there, are just phenomenal. They're just so awesome at what they do. So, you know, if you are struggling with anxiety and depression, you know, you give me and Kim a call and say, hey, gosh, you know, they're the ones that's going to be able to take care of you. You know, we practice a lot of CBT. We do trauma therapy, things like that. You know, if you are struggling with trying to process a trauma, working on relationship or, you know, family issues, then you want to give Cindy a call or Shannon a call. You know, if your child's having a lot of behavioral issues and the school keeps calling and you're just trying to figure out what in the world is going on, then Mark and Shannon can help you with that. They do play therapy. You know, if you and your significant other are going through a rough time and need to deal with some, you know, counseling, couples counseling and things like that, then Nora's gonna be able to help you. You know, have you served as a, you know, as an, an armed forces and Sarah's gonna be able to help you because you're dealing with some of that PTSD. I mean, I feel like we just have the best of the best. And I know that everybody probably feels that way, but you know, our folks are just so committed to the purpose of just helping people grow where they are. Um, and so the different modalities, we use EMDR, um, DBT, CBT. Yeah, maybe you should explain. Yeah, yeah, maybe but, just give us a little. Um, oh, yeah. So cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay, is, is, we've heard of that. Right, right. right. Um, dialectical behavioral therapy. You know, Mark and Shannon are actually our experts in play therapy because okay. if you sit a five-year-old on the couch and, and try to have them process their feelings, they don't have the, the capacity to be able to right. really articulate that. So kids learn and grow through play. So being able to resolve all of that through play. So I feel very blessed to be able to provide this to the community. I think that is, it all sounds wonderful. And we are talking with licensed professional counselor, Christy Vaughn, about Mental Health Express memberships. Um, everything you're sharing is so um, important. And then um, also you have a menagerie of animals on site. Tell us what they are um, and how did that come about? Are they therapy animals? Good question. So um, we do have a little unique situation going on. So we are in the North Roanoke area and I have to give a huge shout out to Mona Sams. She is just an amazing individual. She's an occupational therapist that provides um, occupational therapy for people that have intellectual disabilities. Okay. She uses animals in her approach. So her company is called Creative Therapy Care. Um, so she owns our building. So we actually kind of, I got connected with her. We made a good match and, you know, just yes. kind of formed that relationship. So she has all these fun things like alpacas and pigs and chickens. 
And so our clients who are struggling with, you know, regular life and just the stressors and anxiety and all the things that come along with it, you know, we can sit outside and just hang out with the llamas if we want to. You know, we also do have a few office pups that will come and keep you company. And a couple of them are working towards their therapy certification. Um, but they are taking their time to do that. So. <laughs> That's all right. They're, still They're still providing right. therapy. I'm they sure. absolutely <laughs> are. And plenty of entertainment and plenty of comfort for sure. I think that that is probably one of the best parts of what you offer. Um, I feel um, if we feel someone in our life is having a mental health crisis, how can we help them? Absolutely. Number one, be there for them. You know, acknowledge that they're having something going on. Um, if it's if it is a crisis, then you know um, they really need to have an assessment right away. Okay. Um, so if you cannot get them in with someone right away for an outpatient provider, things of that nature, you can take them, take them to the emergency room and they can become assessed there. You can also take them to Blue Ridge Behavioral Health Care, okay. um, you know, for a full assessment because safety is key. Okay. So we want to make sure that they're safe and those around them are safe. Um, so that would be number one. Okay. And then um, we've only got a minute or so left, but sure. what would... Um, what I wonder is, do some people still feel like they have a, like, is there a stigma attached to it? And do you sometimes, um, is it somebody like from the family or something that'll call on their behalf? Or do, do people, because they know your services are so available, are they more willing to get in touch with you? How do, how do you suggest people who are, are unsure? Mm -hmm. like just give us a call yeah just give us a call you mean um i mean you know do you think like oh um, i shouldn't i shouldn't feel depressed or something like that oh a it, lot of people think yes. that right and it's not a stigma anymore is it mental health is there's help available for absolutely everything. absolutely i mean definitely there's still some faux pas around it right you know I should be stronger. I should be able to get myself together. I don't have anything to be depressed about. I shouldn't feel anxious. I have a great life. I have this going for me, blah, blah, blah. But, but realistically, it is what it is, and we're just here to help. Oh, thank you so much for being Absolutely. on our show today. It has been a real pleasure. Thank you, me too. And I, I, I can't wait to recommend your services. I think there are many of us would would benefit from them. Well, thank and you. And we will have Christy's contact information in our show notes at sisterhoodofthesecondact.com. And we'll be back to wrap up the show after this. Kathy's wardrobe provided by Cabby stylist Darlene Marshall. See the styles in our show notes at sisterhoodofthesecondact.com. I want to thank Penny Blue and Christy Vaughn for joining us today. Penny told us how her father's stories showed that actions speak louder than words. And Christy shared with us a new program her counseling office has created to make mental health care more affordable. I'm Kathy Heberly. Join us next week for another edition of Sisterhood of the Second Act.